Real quick, man, to Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. We'll also uh, put a bookmark. We're also going to go to Mark chapter 5, but first we're going to hit up Luke 4, 18 and 19 to God be the Lord. And it says this that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. Someone say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. To God with the church. Yeah. Understand, we, we read in the Gospels, man, so we begin to grab a hold that that's the life indeed that we are supposed to live. Yeah. Those things that Christ Jesus, man, is saying right there out of his first sermon that he ever preached, man, understand, he is saying in the Gospels, in so many different places in the Gospels, that we too as believers, not just we too as pastors, not just we too as worship leaders, not just we too as quote unquote street evangelists, but if you're in Christ Jesus, we are all evangelists Amen. because evangelists actually mean to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, right. and which he calls each and every single one of us to do so. Can I get a witness? <laughs> so we begin to understand man, that we as simply believers... We as believers are called to live this type of a life. Amen. He tells us in Ephesians 5, 1, Paul does, that we are to be an imitator of God Almighty. So if we're supposed to be an imitator of God Almighty, then it begins to show us that, yes, we are supposed to live out Luke 4, 18 and 19. We are called to proclaim that Jesus love to any and everybody that we come across. Amen. We are called to lay our hands upon the sick, man, and heal them. Tell it. We are called, man, to set the captives free, man, to give liberty Amen. to those who are oppressed. We are called to do so. He calls each and every single one of us, not one higher than the other, but each and every single one of us to do the exact same thing. I love how he starts it off, man, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. And that Holy Amen. Ghost is upon me. Ain't Holy yeah. Ghost so awesome? Yeah. Yeah. He's so amazing. Yeah. And I understand Holy Ghost is a him. Yeah. He's a he and not a it. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to begin to grab a hold of that. It's, it's, it's he, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It's just like when, when people have babies and, and people <laughs> you know, like to call them it's. <laughs> kind of cracks me up because it's a it, the baby is a he or a she it's yeah, not an it that's right. Holy Ghost is a he and indeed not an it but we're going to go to Mark chapter 5 and it says this then they Christ and the disciples then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes and when he had come out of the boat immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit yeah. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Why? Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice, what have you to do with me, a Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And he said to him, come out of the man, you unclean yes. spirit. Amen. Then he asked him, what is your name? And they answered saying, and he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he also begged him, the, 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 the demonic force, the Legion, begged Jesus yeah. earnestly that he would not send, send them out into the country. So today, church, I want to talk to you guys, man, on the simple subject of loving the one who is in front of you. Amen. That's right. And do we know that when we actually begin to love on the one who is in front of us, that everything will begin to change. Everything in their life will begin to change simply because you will bring love their way. So when Jesus and Holy Ghost enter into your life, everything changes. God. It is absolutely impossible to remain the same person that you Amen. once were. When Jesus and Holy Ghost come into your Tell life, it. when you're living your life to glorify Jesus, when you're living your life, man, to glorify that Holy Ghost, man, that, that sweet, sweet Holy Ghost himself, yeah. understand you cannot <laughs> remain the same person that you once were. It's absolutely impossible. Yeah. 
Because when, a, when, when, when you give your life to Christ and, and Holy Ghost becomes to dwell inside of you, you actually begin to hate sin. Amen. Amen. And all you want to do is glorify Him. When Christ Jesus and Holy Ghost, man, come into your marriage or into your relationships, dating relationships, friendship, uh, friendship relationships, whatever it is, they have to change. Amen. They cannot remain the same. It's absolutely impossible. Good. When Jesus and Holy Ghost, man, come into your decision making, understand, all of your decision making, so too, is also going to have to change. It has to. Because we begin to lose our mind and we put on the mind of Christ Jesus. And putting on the mind of Christ Jesus, we're not going to run back into the same sin That's that right. was designed to kill us. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost is going to give us that wisdom to withstand from that. The power, man, to withstand from that. And we are going to begin to choose things in our decision making that is going to honor and glorify Him. And that's what's so absolutely amazing. Yeah. When Jesus and Holy Spirit, man, become the, the center of our worship. And that's when everything in our walk will truly begin to change. And have you ever met someone, man, who just didn't seem like they could just get ahead of the game? It seemed like everything going their way, man, was just simply set their way to beat them down. Ever met that person, man, that just could not seem to catch a break whatsoever? Nothing was easy for them, but everything was difficult for them. Maybe you're here today, man, you're thinking, yeah, I know that person. That person is me. Maybe you know that person, man, that you run into constantly that always has their hands, man, in, 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 their head in their face, man, crying out to the Lord. Lord, I don't understand why everybody else seems to be able to be happy except me. I don't understand why everybody else seems to get blessed here except me. I don't know why everybody else seems to have all these people who want to be around them except me. I don't understand why I keep constantly going through these struggles and troubles and trials and tribulations, but yet everybody else seems to be in a bed of roses. I just don't understand, Jesus, why I can't get away from this funk. Maybe you've come across that person, man. Perhaps that person is you. But my question is, if you come across that person at that moment, what do you do? I love Jesus and his posse, man. They, they roll up to the gathering. They roll up on scene, man, and, and if we go back to Mark chapter 3, which, which we'll, we'll do that here momentarily just to reference it, but if we go back to Mark chapter 3, man, Jesus is in front of this huge crowd, man, and he begins to be, uh, uh, be enticed, if you will. He begins to uh, get prompted by the Holy Spirit to actually go over to where one man was. Simply leave a crowd and to go where one man was. Jesus had a divine appointment. With one. Amen. And we see in scripture that the divine appointment was actually with a man who was demon possessed. Right. This man had a legion inside of him. A legion of demons. Which is at the lowest number 2,000. Wow. Yeah. So we could just, we could, we'll just go with that number. This man had at least 2,000 demons yeah. living inside of him. That's a whole lot of yeah. baggage. Yeah. That's a whole lot of issues going on in this man's life. That's a yeah. whole lot of naughty and a whole lot of bad taking place yes. in this man's life. Amen? Come on. But yet, here's Jesus. Despite this man's issues, despite this man's sins, despite this man's struggles, Despite this man's fallbacks, despite the demons that are living inside of him, Jesus Christ loved him Amen. so much that he wanted to leave the crowd to cross over to the one, to the one man. Amen. I say, I want us to grab a whole church that, that, that it's not, we, we, oftentimes we as, as Christians, man, especially those who are in ministry, but we begin to believe, man, that it's about the crowd when truth be told. Whether you're in ministry or you're a marketplace minister, meaning you, you are a minister at your work spot, whether it's a, 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 a food line or the fish houses or it's, it's a, a, a Wall Street, wherever it may be, man, you're a marketplace minister. It's not about the crowd, but indeed it is about the one who is in front of you. We have to be willing to step out of our pulpit, whatever your pulpit may be. We have to be willing to step out of our pulpit, away from the crowd, and onto the street corner in front of the one, and preach and love the same way we would behind our pulpit yeah. in front of the crowd. Yes, we have to be willing to do that to the one. We have to be willing, church, to, to not just have a meet and greet in between worship songs on Sundays and Wednesdays. 
but have a meet and greet with a stranger in front of us no matter where we're at seven days of the week. It's about the one. We have the divine opportunity, honor, and privilege to be Jesus in the flesh wherever it is that we may be every single day. And it's such an awesome, awesome opportunity. An awesome honor, man, that we get to be Jesus to so many people due to the Holy Spirit that's living inside of us. And despite all this man had going on, it did not stop Jesus from loving him, and it did not stop Jesus from wanting to have an encounter with this man. Despite whatever it is that you have going on in your life, that is not stopping Jesus from loving you, and it is not stopping Jesus from so passionately wanting to have an encounter with you. Despite what you're doing right now, thinking right now, that's not stopping Holy Spirit himself from loving you and from wanting to choose your temple to have a dwelling resting place for the rest of your earthly life. Amen. And it's so absolutely awesome. And if we could stop all the chaos that is going on up here in our minds and oftentimes, unfortunately, in our hearts, that so many times blinds us from seeing the one who is in front of us. The crowd so easily could have blinded Jesus from listening to Holy Spirit who was prompting him to go across the the lake, man, to the other side where the one was, the one who desperately needed him. Oftentimes we allow the chaos that's going on in our world, in our mind, man, to blind us from, from deafening us from listening to what Holy Spirit himself is telling us. But if we could stop the chaos and love on the one who is in front of us, understand, lives would begin to change. The church world would begin to change. This community would begin to change. Your homes would begin to change. Workplaces, schools would all begin to change, man. And it's absolutely awesome. (coughs) Jesus rose up to the gatherings, man, and and, and it it tells us that he steps out of the boat, and when he steps out of the boat, he's immediately surrounded by dead things. This man was by the tombs. So he steps out of the boat, man, and he steps basically into a cemetery. Steps out, man, he, he's with his boys, man, full of life, man, full, full of passion, man, and he steps out of the boat onto a new territory, man, and he steps right into a cemetery. Everything around him is dead. Church, I'm here to tell you, oftentimes Christ will call us to step out of the boat and to step into a cemetery where everything is D-O-A. It is a dead situation, but he's prompting you to step out of the boat because wherever you go, so does he. So when you step out of the boat into a dead situation, he's calling you there to begin to exhale and to breathe life into a dead situation and to bring a revival to wherever it is that you're at, amen, to revive the dead marriage, to revive the dead relationship, to revive the dead person that's standing in front of you. He's calling us to do so. (coughs) Some of you guys feel like you're living in a dead career, a dead household, a dead marriage. Well, man, in Jesus' name, we are going to speak life into that. Because whatever we speak with the Holy Ghost, understand, we speak that of life. And dead things have no choice but to come back to life. And it's absolutely awesome. And he calls each and every single one of us to do just that. The Holy Ghost dwells inside of us. So wherever we go, so too does he. See, it's a dangerous game for the enemy to allow you to step onto a cemetery. Oftentimes he tries to scare us with it. But it's a dangerous game for him to allow you to step into a cemetery. Because doesn't he know wherever you go, you got to breathe? You got to breathe in air and exhale air. Mm -hmm. So no matter what... You begin to breathe that life of the Holy Ghost. And I tell you what, man, people might think that it's a zombie apocalypse when they begin to see the dead rise in Jesus' name. It was dangerous, absolutely dangerous for Smith Wigglesworth to walk into a funeral home. Wasn't dangerous for him. It was dangerous for the people around him. This is a man who will pull out people out of a coffin, slam them up against the wall, and command them to live again. That's awesome faith, man. And by record, history record, not Christian myth, history record shows that he raised seven people from the dead. That's faith, man. 
Whatever it is that he went, he breathed life. He spoke life. Amen. Funeral homes, street corners, churches, we are called to do the exact same Amen. thing. Love the one who is in front of us, man. And that love changes everything. Yeah. Man, a, a, a quick uh, glorifying story on, on, on our Savior King, man. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Cindy's granddad, man, who's, who's, who's extremely sick. But he's 96 years old. And there's been many, a, many, a, many, a, many a times, man, that uh, he's not a believer. And, and we tried to, uh, uh, to witness to him, and, and he would always shut us down. Uh, he would he would always uh, uh, come off uh, 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 angry at, you know angry at us and and just completely uh, uh, shut us down man and and so we just try to love on him and so on and so forth and, yeah. and show him Christ because we know that he's not going to listen to us about Christ. Right. Well, he's gotten really sick here recently, man, and uh, uh, my uh, my mother-in-law Cindy's mama, uh, Miss Linda, is, has been taking uh, awesome care of him and uh, uh, you know it, doing some things, man, that uh, that we just wouldn't want people to have to do for us. Right. Amen. And uh, just the other day, yes, uh, um, what's today? Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, Saturday. Yeah. Sometimes I get days running. Right <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, Saturday, uh, uh, thank you, Jesus. I think it was Saturday. Friday or Saturday. It was this weekend. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, Cindy, man, uh, uh, I, I, I get home and, and Cindy begins to tell me this awesome story. And what it was was Linda went over there, we're going to say Saturday morning, and uh, began to uh, uh, help Pop Pop out. And uh, praise the Lord, he asked her, why are you doing, why, why are you so nice to me doing these things that uh, you know that I wouldn't do for anybody else? And she told him, she said, it's because of the love of Jesus. Amen. And she said, the love of Jesus has prompts me to do that. Woo. And man, my, my pop pop, man, 96 years old now, said to her, man, I want that. Yes. Yeah. 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 So right there, man, my mom and I prayed with pop pop, 96 years That's old, awesome. to receive Christ Keep Jesus mad. in his life. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That is and, awesome. And, and then pop pop had to go to the hospital uh, later on that night, man, and, 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 and they had to transport him to Chesapeake. But she, and, and this used to be a very <laughs> angry man. Not, not, not a very nice guy at times, wow. man. But she said that he was so respectful to the nurses, yeah. being so wow. nice, to the point that when one of his sons walked in, they thought he was on something. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how awesome it is. And that's how quick, man, that the Amen. Lord was moving on Tell him it. and just changing his heart. Good. But I say that to say this. Linda was loving yeah. the one right. in front of her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when we begin to love the one who is in front of us, amazing things will begin to take place, man. Simply by loving the one in front of us. This man was in a dead situation. He was dead to the yeah, world right. in Mark chapter 5. Disowned, outcast, death chasing him down, trying its best to get him to commit suicide yeah. each and yeah. every single day. But yet he has a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. He has a, 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 a life-changing encounter with Jesus, and he receives the most amazing gift yes. at the end of this. Yeah. And that's what's so awesome. And what's so cool, man, is, is Christ Jesus, man, and his disciples roll up to gatherings. That's what they're at. And that word gatherings, man, actually means a reward at the end. Mm -hmm. And it's so awesome that, indeed, Jesus rolls up to this man who is in a dead situation, and, yes, he receives a reward at the end. At the end of the encounter with Christ Jesus, he received life. He received Holy Spirit. He received joy. He received freedom. Amen. If you go on to lead, read even further, he received back his family. Yeah. It's absolutely awesome. He received an awesome reward. And church, when people encounter Christ Jesus, they too will have no choice but to receive a reward Amen. at the end. And it's so cool because since the Holy Ghost dwells inside of us, when people begin to encounter us, they have no choice but to encounter love. They have no choice but to encounter Holy Spirit. Yeah. They have no choice but to encounter Christ Jesus. They have no choice but to encounter life. Yeah. They have no choice but to encounter healings. They have no choice but to encounter salvation. Yeah. They have no choice but to encounter deliverance. Yeah. Because wherever we go, yeah. so too does He. God. And He is all of those things. And since He dwells in us, yeah. so too are we. We. That's good, man. Christ wants to use us, man, to bring Holy Spirit reward to so many people. Amen. 
It's so awesome to think that he wants to use us. He wants to use us to show people how mind-blowing and awesome he is and that there is a new beginning in him simply because the Holy Spirit is upon you. Amen. So my question is, since he's upon you, will you go out and do what Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19 is actually prompting us to do? Amen. Will you be willing to step out of your boat Will you be willing to step out of your comfort zone and begin to speak life, begin to bring life into the cemeteries, the dead zones that we are surrounded by each and every single day? Jesus, man, <clears throat> Mark chapter 3, man, he's preaching to this crowd. I mean, all kinds of people there, man. And it's just, it's just an awesome thing going on, man. His disciples are blown away. I can't believe this, man. We're hanging out with this guy named Jesus, man. And look at all these crowds of people that just want to come out and listen to yeah. him. Man, and we get to like, we get to be with him 24-7 yeah. with all these other people are so jealous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? This is just awesome, yeah. right? So he's preaching to these multitudes, man, and then he gets prompted, he gets led by the Holy Spirit to cross over to the other side. There are going to be days in your walk Come on. that you are doing something. Perhaps something that you even want to do. Yeah. Perhaps something that you know that you need Come to on. do. But yet the Holy Ghost is going to begin to prompt you. Yeah. He's going to begin to entice you. Yeah. He's going to begin to lead you, yeah. to direct you, yeah. to guide you, yeah. to stop what it is that you're doing, yeah. and indeed to cross over to something yeah. else, amen, because there is someone over there or something yeah. over there that you need to begin to speak life amen. into. So when that begins to happen, church, please do not hesitate, amen. but indeed go. I don't care how much of the crowd you have in front of you. I don't care how much they seem to be into the things that you're saying. I don't see. I don't care if they begin to ask you for your autograph, trying to puff up your head in a crazy way. And if you begin to get uh, prompted to go somewhere else, stop everything you're doing and go because someone's life can depend on it. Someone's salvation can depend on it. Someone's healing can depend on it. Someone's deliverance can depend on it. <laughs> Holy Spirit is not going to prompt you to go somewhere to waste your time. Right, right. He's going to prompt you to go somewhere. So indeed, somebody can have freedom Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. So he gets prompted, man, by Holy Spirit to go across to the other side. So he says to his disciples, man, we're going to load up and we're going to go over to this other side, man. And as they're going to the other side, they encounter a nasty storm. So this big nasty storm comes that way, and, and, and why, why do we think that is? Because the devil is doing his best to stop them from reaching the other side because he knows what's going to take place on the other side. Just like the devil is trying his best to stop you from reaching the other side. Because he knows that when Jesus gets to the other side, Holy Spirit gets to the other side, God in the flesh gets yeah. to the other side, and the devil knows that when you get to the other side, Jesus gets to the other side, yeah. Holy Spirit gets to the other side, now God dwelling in your flesh gets to the other side, so that means yeah. healings begin to be received on the other side. Deliverances yeah. begin to be received on the other side. Salvations begin to be received on the other side. Free, uh, 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 restoration begins to be received all on the other side. So the enemy is going to try his best to cause every storm to come your way to hinder you from reaching the other yeah, side. And yeah. unfortunately, oftentimes, he's successful. Come on. We begin to see these storms, and what we actually begin to do is go, we turn around and go, you know what, I'll go back later. Mm, I'll just go back later, man, and, and do what it is that I got to do. So we turn around and we wait for the storm to end. But here's a little secret. The storm never ends. Amen. When you walk away from it, right. it stays there because it is expecting you to later on try to cross back over. So he knows that if I just stay there, then it's going to keep you from crossing the other side. The only way to stop that storm is when we storm right through it Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. That is the only way for it to stop. How many of us know, man, that later is oftentimes too late? Yeah. yeah. Nobody has time for the anger. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> nobody has time for later. All people need a now. Yeah. Right. All people need a now, whether they want to admit it or not. They need a now, not a later. 
But but indeed, man, we've got to begin to listen to Holy Spirit who's prompting us to cause us to go here, to that's telling us to go there, that's telling us to do this, that's calling us to say this. We've got to begin to listen now. Because it's so very, very important. And truth be told, every single person, every single person, not just a crowd, every single person is worth the now. Amen. Amen. Despite what they've done, despite what they've said, despite who they are, despite their beliefs, despite the way they live their life, despite the way they think of you, they are worth the now. Amen. Because Jesus said so. Not because of us. We actually do not get to pick. That's right. He does. Yeah, that's right. But we see that it's in this storm, man, that, that the disciples begin to cry out, and, you know, the, Jesus, you know, God, what's going on? You know, and he's got to wake up, and he's like, man, are you serious? Oh, you have little face. Peace be still. You know what I'm saying? Oftentimes, man, oftentimes, in our storms, man, we begin to cry out the same thing. Jesus, are you asleep? Come on. Jesus, what's going on? Help me, Lord. Help me. Truth be told, man, he's not asleep. He's not asleep in your storm. Amen. He's not even running from the storm you're running from. Thank you, Jesus. Truth is, he's just not scared Amen. of the storm. Amen. And he's not scared of the one who's caused the storm. Yeah. So if he's not scared, then that means if he dwells inside of you, mm -hmm. then so too we shouldn't be scared either. Amen. 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 Because of the one who is greater than the one who is in the world, mm -hmm. and he dwells inside of us, What's there to be scared of? That's right. Absolutely, positively, 100%, Not nothing. nothing. Then we see, so chapter 3, man, he, he gets prompted to go to the other side. Chapter 4, man, there's a storm. Chapter 5, as the storm is ending, <clears throat> they're getting closer to this other side. You can only imagine what begins to go through the disciples' minds. Oh, man, Jesus, this is crazy, bro. Man, I just can't wait till we get to the other side. Hey, John, man, how many people do you think are going to be over there? Dude, I don't know. All I know is, man, that last uh, picture that I Instagram, no, man, I've already got like 400 <laughs> hits, man. They've been up there for like, for like three minutes. No. You know what I'm saying? Right? I mean, dude, my, my Twitter is blowing up like crazy. You know what I'm saying? The, yeah, man. And, 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 and you know that, man, did y'all see that selfie that I took? It was like this, and the crowd was behind me. You know what I'm saying? It was just awesome. You know what I'm saying? Man, Thomas, you think there's going to be more over there? I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? It's probably going to be a little bit less. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, come on, man. And as they just get closer and closer, you know, they're like, Jesus, man. Yo, Matthew. Man, you was good in math, obviously, ripping all them people off. <laughs> do you see, do you see like a, a bigger crowd than what we just left? And Matthew's like, hmm, nope. I think Jesus is a little off on this one, right? And they begin to say, Jesus, man, uh, I'm not seeing anybody, Lord. And we're, we're, about, we're about there. <laughs> Let me see them binoculars real quick. That, geez, I, see a, I see a cemetery. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see anything else. So Jesus, and Jesus is like, don't worry, don't worry. There's going to be like 2,001. <laughs> <laughs> and the disciples, man, <clears throat> you can only imagine man, that the disciples are like, yeah, Jesus, you, you ride on the one. I see the one. And I ain't see the 2,000. Thank Jesus, man. He, we should have woke him up, man. He needed a little bit more sleep. Yeah. And they're <laughs> Jesus is actually off. This is so cool. Jesus is actually off, right? And then as they get a little bit closer, a little bit closer, man, their laughter turns to sheer fear when they see the one, right? <laughs> That's a dirty birdie! I need spankings! And they're like, oh my God. And they're like, Jesus, take the wheel. Take the wheel. Jesus. Wake up. Get up for Jesus. I want my mommy, Jesus. Get out of I want to go back. I want to go. Right? 
imagine. Well, indeed, what it is that they begin to see. So I was like, Jesus, come on, man. What did you bring us to? I like, I like being with the crowd a whole lot more than I like being with this crazy person. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus, stop this, man. And it says that, that and when he came out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man of the unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and with chains. What do you do, church? What do you do when? Not if. But when. And I say when because you have already come across people like this, yeah. and you will indeed once again. Yeah. So what do you do when you come across someone who is chained with the chains of molestation. Mm. What do you do when you come across somebody who is chained with the chains of rape? <laughs> chained with the chains of incest? Chained with the chains of, 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 of being a thief and, and being a liar? Being a gossiper? Mm -hmm. What do you do when you see somebody who is chained with the chains of sickness? When you see somebody, man, who is chained with bad decisions? <laughs> When you see somebody, man, who is just in, 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 in chained down with the horrible uh, 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 images running in their mind over and over and over and over again of their past. So many people we come across with every single day are chained with their addictions. They're chained to their old lifestyles. They can't seem to break away. And when a chain does get broken off of them again, somebody or something is so quick to come right back up and chain them right back down once again. What do we do? Because it is at that moment that the Holy Ghost has set you over there to set them free. <clears throat> when well, they just weren't willing to receive it. Yeah, and if those excuses make us feel better, and we got to begin to change our stinking thinking. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm reminded in Scripture, and this is one thing that, that, that myself, Pastor Rob, no, White Simon, so many of us have been in prayer about. Because nowhere in Scripture does Jesus say, are you ready? No, you're not okay. No, Jesus didn't give the chance oh, to say, are you right, ready? Right, right. He just did. He didn't yeah. ask this man, sir, do you want to be set free? Come on. No, Jesus is life. Jesus Amen. is freedom. Yeah. So that's what he did. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will place us in situations that he is calling us and causing us to do. Just that it goes on to say, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and, and the shackles broken, neither could tame him. And, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. How many of you guys know? And you can be demon oppressed, demon possessed, attempting suicide, cutting yourself, beating yourself, doing whatever, yet still at the same time crying out. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy, man. We have to be in tune to what the Holy Spirit is actually saying to us so that the person who is in front of us, we know what yeah. is truly yeah. going on. Yeah. We have to begin to allow Holy Spirit to talk to us so that he can break it down. Yeah. This man is in so much, so much bondage for so many years. Just like so many of the people that we come in contact yeah. with each and every yeah. single day. Real talk, man. Yeah. Oftentimes we don't think so because, you know, that they might look like they have it all together. But we're coming across people every day who are in bondage. Yeah. You know, and, and, and as Christians, man, we're like, yeah, you know, I, I know, and, 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 and we see that, but what do we honestly do about it besides making up those excuses that help us sleep better at night? Because truth be told, while we're making up excuses that help us sleep better, these people are being tormented. Yeah. All yeah. night. All night, all night long. You know what I'm saying? We're sleeping great. They're being tormented all night long, not able to sleep. Yeah, that's right. It's crazy. Yeah. This man is cutting himself with a stone. And if you begin to break down that word stone in the Greek, man, it translates back to, to tablet and or law. So you can begin to just look in the spiritual and he's being cut down by the law. How many times has someone come into the church and wanting to change their life, but yet they get cut down yeah. by the church? Right. Yeah. They get cut down by the quote-unquote Christians. 
They get cut down by religion. They get cut down by who they think God Christ Jesus is, but they have the religious view of Jesus and not the biblical view of right. Jesus. Preach. Too many times, man, the devil is out there successfully and willingly cutting people down and nothing's being done about it, man. And truth be told, the devil is going to see to it that the, la the final cut is going to be deep enough so that indeed they eventually right. bleed out. Mm -hmm. But little did this man know that that day, Grace, mercy, and love indeed came across that water. Little does the outside world know that today, church, grace, mercy, and love in you is going to go to lunch. Amen. And that waiter is going to be your one. Yeah. Little do they know that grace, mercy, and love has to go to the grocery store and the cashier is going to be your one. Little does the demonic world know that grace, mercy, and love has to stop to get gas today. And the fella or the female beside you pumping gas is going to be your one. See, they'll see, just like this man saw, they will see grace, mercy, and love coming across the parking lot. They'll see it coming across the restaurant. They'll see it coming across the courtroom or the classroom. They'll begin to see it. And so too, a dead situation will begin to burst with life. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped and cried out with a loud voice, What what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you, my God, that you do not torment me. This man runs to Jesus and begins to worship him, and the devils cry out. Understand, church, just because we see people worshiping, just because we see people looking like they have it all together, don't mean that they're not being tormented by the demonic. That's real. And demons love to have people fake the funk and make it look like they're pretty on the outside while they're being tormented and murdered on the inside. But God wants to use you. Holy Spirit wants to prompt you today to bring them that reward. That reward of Holy Spirit. That reward in Jesus' name. That reward of life. That reward of freedom. And that happens when we begin to love the one who is in front of us. What do we do when we see the one at the grocery store, man? who is just so down and out there, hindered by life, everything that's going on in life, do we put down our grocery list and remember that we are actually enlisted in the army of Christ Jesus? Yeah. And begin to wage war on, the, on their behalf in Jesus' name? Yeah. When we see that person man, who is just so broken, they have brokenness written all over them. They just can't seem, man, to get loosed. From these chains that constantly find themselves wrapping around them. They get beat down by the years of bad decisions. Arrested by these demonic. Arrested and uh, stripped down by sin and everything and anything that they once were. The devil has convinced them they're absolutely nothing and they never can be. But yet the moment you step up to them, understand they will fall down and the demons will begin to cry out. Yeah. It's your first instinct to get fearful and run. Or is it indeed to enter in into a love war on their behalf in the mighty name of Jesus? If negative thoughts are running. Is negative thoughts running through your mind, or is Christ Jesus running through your mind? Well, I, I, I can't, man. I, I just can't, man. That's, that's scary. I'm, I'm scared. I, I've never dealt with that stuff before. Listen, what do you have to be scared of? Why? You have Christ Jesus, God Almighty, Holy Spirit. What do you have to be scared of? Yeah. Truth be told, they're scared of you. That's right. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Oh, yeah. So don't label yourself. Don't automatic, automatically beat yourself and say that you can't because you can in yeah. Jesus' name. That's right. You can bind up the one or the two thousand and one in the mighty name of Jesus because you have the authority and the power because of he who is in you. So start to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he has sent me here to set you, sir, to set Amen. you, man, free today in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. I promise you, church, I promise you, God is not going to cry. <laughs> what are we gonna, I did not see this legion sneak up and get this man. Those 2,000, 2,000 plus stuck right by me. I don't understand what just happened. No, God knows exactly what he's going to do. And church, he wants to use you to do it. Amen. That's what's so awesome. He wants to use you to set them free. He wants to use you to bring them life. He wants to use you to heal their disease or to heal their sickness. To speak it 
over their life to, to, to bring deliverance. But what he needs is for us to lose our mind, take our mind off and to lose our mind, and to put on the mind of Christ Jesus and to be him indeed in the flesh. But we can only do that if we believe what is in this gospel. These demons begin to cry out. Cry out, man, because they're in front of the Holy King. And understand, when you begin to hear these demons cry out, shut them up yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus, and then cast them out. Amen. You cannot do that without grace. You cannot do that without mercy. Right. You cannot do that without compassion. You cannot do that without love, because you cannot do that, church, without Holy Spirit Himself. But you can do it with all of that. It's not about the crowd, but indeed it is about the one who is in front of you. They need you, most importantly. They need that of Christ Jesus. Amen. And then get ready to, uh, to wrap up. It says, uh, <clears throat> For he said to him, Come out of this man, you unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he, and he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also begging him earnestly that he would not send him out into the country. We can only imagine, man, when this was taking place, exactly what it was that the disciples were thinking. When they began to see this. Truth be told, man, some of the disciples were probably thinking perhaps what some of you guys are thinking right now. And that's absolutely no way I am not going to get involved with this. That is for somebody else. No thank you. Send me Holy Spirit somewhere else. But I'm here to tell you, man, the Holy Spirit is going to send you what he wants to Amen. send you. And oftentimes it will be out of your comfort zone. And that's it. But he will comfort you. He will empower you. He will see to it. That you control, that he through you is going to control every situation that he brings That's you right. into. Yeah. Two thousand demons could not hold this man back from worshiping the king of kings. Church, just like two thousand demons cannot hold you back from delivering somebody. From two thousand plus demons. To bring them into a true relationship with the king of kings. This man saw Jesus from afar, man. And something drew him to him. Church, just like when those people see you today at a restaurant, today at the grocery store, today just out in the community, something is going to draw them to you. Yeah. And it's going to be that Holy Ghost. And when they come to you, man, they're going to begin to cry <coughs> out. And whether it's them crying out for help, or the demonic crying out to try to scare you, understand. They are terrified of you. If you could see in the spiritual, yeah. then you would see how fearful they are of you. All because of he who dwells in you. If we could change up here. How do we do that? By allowing the Holy Ghost to abide right here. And when he truly abides right here, this up here will change. And when he abides right here, man, you might be five foot nothing. But yet walk around like you're a ten foot tall giant. And no matter what it is that you're facing, because you already know that it's a fixed fight and you have the victory. Amen. He just simply wants you to love the one in front of you. He simply wants you to open up your mouth. And look what will begin to happen. Last verse right here. When they came to Jesus and saw the one, then they came to Jesus and saw the one, the people in the surrounding area, and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. All of this took place because Christ Jesus simply loved the one who was in front of him. Church, my question is with you. Later on, it says but that he asked Jesus if he could go with him, and Jesus said no. I want you to go back to your family and tell them what the Lord did for you today. Go back to the one. Go back to the one in your home, the one in your community, the one in your workplace. And tell them what the Lord has done for you today. Tell them what the Lord wants to do for them today. The one who is in front of you at that very moment is the most important one. Can we pray?
Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you all glory, all honor, my King. We thank you so much, Holy Ghost, just for your dwelling presence among us. We thank you for your grace, mercy, and your love. We thank you for empowering us to do what it is that you have so awesomely called us to do. We're excited to love the one in front of us. We're excited to tell them about Jesus. We're excited to bring a healing. We're excited to bring deliverance. We're excited to bring freedom. We're excited to restore marriages. We're excited to restore families. We're excited to restore broken lives. Jesus, we thank you that you would use us that you would place us in front of the one. My King, we love you. Thank you. Does anybody here today, and you don't know Jesus, then you know what's awesome? You're the one. You're the one that Jesus is standing in front of right now. He wants to set you free just like he did for this man. We're going to simply ask you to open up your heart right where you stand. Now sit. And we're going to receive Jesus into our life. And Holy Spirit Himself will find your house, you, your body, His dwelling place. If that's who you want to be forgiven of sins, you want that new life, you want that restoration, you want that reward. If that's you, simply open up your heart. We're going to have everybody repeat this prayer for me. Say, Jesus, I need a Savior, for I'm a sinner. But I know in you there's forgiveness. There's freedom. There's life. There's newness. I want it. I need it. I'm here to take it. And I thank you that you came to get me. So Jesus, I'm your one. And I ask you to send me out, Holy Ghost. Place me in front of another one. And let me to love on them. Like you love them. And all God's kids said, Amen. Hallelujah. Church, stand to your feet. <coughs> We're going to get you to some worship. Yell out, pop out, dance out, shout out. Whatever you do, just do it in the mighty name of Jesus.